Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. So today what we're going to do is answer some of the questions that you had uh, about prisons. I figured I'd dress as an old-timey sheriff to make things a little bit more interesting. So question number one was, how do they deal with overpopulation in prisons? Uh, how are prisoners separated? Uh, do they still do solitary confinement? So what I want to show you is a, a small piece of a slideshow that Dr. Melissa Munn um, had created and would, would often share with our class. So this right here is a federal prison institution that's not a solitary confinement cell. Um, there, as you can see, are room for two inmates, but they will actually triple bunk them. So the third inmate would go right under here in a cell under the bed, right next to the toilet. So you can imagine three guys sharing a toilet in the middle of the night, and then one having to sleep underneath this particular bench. So they do triple bunk in federal prisons. Um, the cells look almost like you would uh, imagine here. Uh, from a place like Prison Break, so they're all in a row like this with locked, barred doors. Um, if you're lucky to get a cell all by yourself, this is what it would look like right here. Um, so you can see this gentleman in here is in with his cell and he gets um, a certain dollar amount of things that he is actually allowed to have in there. Um, and so say he's at his maximum, if he wanted to bring in uh, a watch or have some jewelry, he would have to actually forfeit one of these items that's in his cell. Um, one of the next questions was about food. What does food look like? So I'm going to show you right now uh, what prison food in Canada looks like. This is actually a federal inmate's diet. So if you're vegan, um, you get a little bit less in terms of calories. There is a commissary, so you can buy things like ramen noodles, etc., which are in some ways actually a prison currency. There's many TV shows that make fun of it. Uh, but you can see it's pretty lean pickings, so often prisoners will work make money and then buy things like tuna or anything with protein in order to give them just a, a little bit more in their diet. So um, how do they deal with overpopulation? They triple bunk. Uh, prisoners, how are they separated? When they first arrive in a, a federal institution or a provincial institution, there's basically a checklist uh, about how violent you are, how violent you've been in the past, uh, what are some of your medical needs, what, what's the crime that you've been charged with, and that sort of tells you where, where they'll, um, they'll be housed and whether or not they'll have uh, somebody with them. If they have a communicable disease, such as AIDS or Hep C, they're not allowed to be uh, usually housed with somebody else, or if they're a sex offender, um, they, they typically don't get housed with somebody else. Do the prisoners get treated poorly? Um, really depends on the prison institution, Canada, America, or Norway. Um, they try to treat them fairly, um, would be what, what I would suggest here in the Canadian prison system. Uh, but they have deprived you of your liberty. There is no death penalty in Canada, so literally the worst thing that we can do in Canada, really as, as a prison system, incarceration system, is to deprive you of your liberty. Do the prisoners have to crouch and cough at all prisons? So for those unfamiliar with what that means is uh, usually upon intake, you're put into what's called a dry cell. It's a cell with no running water, no toilet, particularly if you're, you've smuggled drugs in, uh, to a prison in the past. And they just make, make wait till you pass things to make sure that you haven't swallowed, say, a, a condom full of heroin or haven't uh, put something um, in your rectum in order to smuggle it in. So what they do is they make you crouch down and cough. And typically what that does is it would, if you were hiding something uh, in your, your rectum, that would drop out. So yeah, uh, every prison institution uh, that's a prison where you're going to be housed would, would do that. Uh, do you have to keep, how do you keep sicknesses out of prison? Great, great question currently. So what they can do is they can lock the prison down so inmates get barely any time out, which of course makes them very, very upset. Imagine you were in quarantine, but you couldn't leave your bedroom. Um, and then they often restrict movement of guards to only certain areas so that the guard won't transfer it uh, if they go to one institution or the other institution. So if they work at multiple institutions, um, or they would keep them sort of in the same pods and they would uh, indicate to guards that they have to isolate at home as well and follow public health orders. Um, is prison, in like in the movies and TV series where prison is really hard on their inmates? I would suggest in Canada not really, like guards don't go and like routinely beat people or anything like that. Um, here they call them corrections officers, not guards, and their job is to build relationships with inmates to help uh, reform them and help them when they leave uh, become better. So you can't demonstrate to inmates what it's like to be uh, a good member of society and beat them 
uh, at the same time that really sends the the, ult the wrong message. Uh, what are some things prisoners have to do now because of COVID-19? Uh, from what I understand, they've, they've pretty much locked down uh, the prisons and made it so there's restricted movement. Does Canada use the death penalty or did it uh, in the past? Yeah, up until the 1970s, uh, Canada did have the death penalty and then they repealed that law and got rid of it. Uh, so now life in prison is the maximum penalty. However, the military still in Canada still had the death penalty, I, I believe, until the 1990s. Uh, does Canada use the death penalty or did it get passed? We just answered that. If a prisoner escapes from prison, how much time should the police spend? What's uh, released is what's called a Canada-wide warrant, typically. And so every police force in Canada uh, is on the lookout for that individual. So in every traffic stop or uh, anything Canada-wide, they're, they're looking to find that, that individual. And they will look uh, to find them until that person basically shows up dead or gets arrested again. So there was a guy recently in Penticton who had fled uh, the eastern uh, coast. Uh, he was somewhere in New Brunswick, I believe. And he was out here for 14 years, and then the police finally caught him, and then he was sent back to, uh, to deal with the sex assault that, that occurred back there. If a prisoner escapes, how much time should the police spend? What is the difference between prisons and rehabilitation systems? So there's, there's different layers of prisons in Canada. There are jails, uh, which are just to, to house people. So if you got arrested for, say, drunk in public, you would just sit in a holding cell for about eight hours and then be released. Or if you were arrested for something like assault, you might spend time in jail, go to court, and they would say, okay, you now need to go to prison. Uh, provincial prison is two years less a day, and federal prison is anything over two years that you're sentenced for. Um, so the goal of all institutions in Canada is, is to actually re rehabilitate and make it so these people can join up and be part of society once again when they're done. They're not punishment-oriented uh, institutions. Their goal is to house these people until they're safe to come back to the public or until they've served their time. Is jail different than prison? Yeah, like I said, here in Penticton in the RCMP detachment, we do have a jail, and that's to hold people to go to court. It's kind of a temporary facility, whereas prison would uh, would be something for a longer-term stay. All right. Uh, what is the worst prison in the world? So there, there are many prisons that are terrible. That's why I showed you those initial YouTube clips. Um, so you'd have to decide for yourself. Black Dolphin's horrible. But, I mean, some prisons are like, you know, they're horrible in that there is no guards, uh, like in Honduras or in different countries where they just leave the inmates to run the prison. And then there's other places that are horrible because some people would say they're horrible because they treat inmates too well, like in, in Norway. So it really depends on your personal view and where you fit on the political spectrum. How are inmates considered for AlphaPod? Hey, great question. Somebody knows about the provincial institution here. So AlphaPod in... Um, in the Okanagan Correctional Center is the pod where the sort of scariest or worst offenders are. So that's typically sex offenders, violent offenders, um, anybody who is a danger to other prisoners in, in the institution that requires extra care. So those would be the ones that um, aren't suitable for what's called general population, which is just uh, sort of the regular prison folks that are in there. And so you have to be incredibly dangerous and violent to be in there. What is the difference between jail and prison? Answer that. What does a typical day look like for a prisoner? Uh, they try to, in the provincial institution here, model what it's like to um, actually have a structure of an ordinary average day. So what they would do is they would get up uh, sometimes 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. They would have breakfast. They would uh, eventually go to work somewhere in the prison, have a job for about six, seven hours. 2.30, 3 o'clock, they, or sorry, they, they would have a bag lunch or they would have lunch. And then they would come back at uh, 2.30, 3 o'clock, and then there's programming and socializing, and there's sort of yard time. The yard is just kind of a, a giant concrete uh, area where they can go that you can sort of see the sky through some mesh. And then you would uh, you know, have dinner and then go to bed. It's meant to help criminals who are maybe used to spending a lot of time at night um, going out and sleeping all day and not really having like a productive schedule to learn what a productive schedule looks like. What does a typical uh, day look like in prison? We know that difference between a provincial and a federal prison. It's really the time you're sentenced. If you're two years less a day, provincial prison, and you do have to wear a uniform there. It's usually red. Uh, federal prison, it's anything over two years, and you get to sort of wear your own clothing, and it's a longer-term haul. Um, difference between minimum and maximum security. 
Minimum security sometimes won't even have walls. They might have a line painted around the prison that says uh, prison. And if you step over that line, you've escaped from prison. If you're on the other side, you, you don't. Now, most minimum security prisons, prisoners are really happy to be there because it's not uh, maximum security and uh, your liberty is not taken away. So they wouldn't actually usually escape or walk away from that prison. Sometimes there are housing units, kind of like cluster housing or dorm housing at a university uh, where there's lots of programming available. And it's only when an inmate's proven that they can handle that, that security level. Uh, and as for maximum security, there's super max and there's maximum security. The provincial prison at Oliver is a maximum security institution. Uh, lots of locked doors and, um, and you're basically stuck in there. Depending on your crime, does it determine you have your, a cell on your own or if you share it with someone? Absolutely. In the jail that I work at, uh, for instance, we're not allowed to have uh, prisoners uh, who are sex offenders or contagious, uh, who are older, with minors uh, allowed in, in with them. So we basically look and we have a, a chart called the Vizen chart. Are they violent? Are they infectious? Are they suicidal? Um, are they an escape risk? Are they, um, are they somebody who would harm somebody else in that cell and they're not allowed to be with somebody else? And if you're a teenager, you have to be by yourself or, or a child. You can't be with someone else and you can't even be with other teenagers. How often are people executed in the United States? They do have the death penalty in several states and those executions are sort of ongoing, but you have to exhaust every chance for appeal. So it usually takes about 10 to 15 years to execute somebody who is on death row. Um, how do people uh, get into different levels of security? Well, if you're an escape risk or violent or a flight risk or you throw your feces at guards and things like that, you'll put in, be put into a higher level of security. Uh, in fact, if we go back to here, if you're in SEG, which is segregation, uh, you would eventually be uh, sometimes placed in a cell that looks like, let me see if I can find it, uh, solitary confinement. You'd be placed in a single cell that's by yourself. That's incredibly tiny. They're about you know, eight feet by eight feet at the max. And I'm going to try to find an outdoor segregation cell in this slideshow for you. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, so here would be a segregation cell. You can see that they're they're very small. They're pretty pretty disturbing. They don't have much in them, so you can hurt yourself. And here's an Edmonton's institution. This is the outdoor segregation yard. So you get in and you get an hour of outdoor time each day uh, to spend in a in a cell like this, um, which is outdoors. So not very glamorous. Why do most guards not try and keep order in jail when? fights occur. Uh, so guards, the thing that they have to take into account is their safety. So if guards aren't safe, or if guards get hurt, then everyone else can get hurt. The inmates can steal their weapons, like their pepper spray or their batons. Um, so sometimes when a fight occurs, guards will call uh, a lot of backup, which can take anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes to come in. So they will sometimes let the inmates tire themselves out through fighting and then they'll go in because if they get hurt, they're, they're no good to anyone else. But typically, uh, they do keep order in jail. What's the food like? I showed you already, pretty, pretty disgusting, pretty grim. Uh, although here at the provincial institution, it's almost like a white spot, the type of food that you get. So it'd be like hamburgers and french fries and uh, meals that are prepared off-site and then they're brought on-site uh, for inmates to eat. Are prisons really that bad? Uh, some people say they are, some people don't. It depends on the level of security, the length of your stay, etc. cetera. Um, I mean, imagine having your liberty taken away. Uh, that'd be pretty horrible. So, however, if you're a street entrenched individual who's looking for order and structure, food and warmth, some people do actually thrive in that, that prison culture. And sometimes they become what's called institutionalized, where they actually need that uh, culture and they seek it out. Uh, is prison in real life like the shows or movies? Uh, to some degree, yeah, it, it is. They look often very similar. Uh, there's not as much like sadism with the guards or anything like that. Um, and there's not uh, nearly as much violence as the movies portray, but there is horrendous and horrific violence there. Um, I remember a, a poem written by an inmate once talked about how he was in the food line and somebody next to him got stabbed and lay dying and he had to step over him to get the next uh, plate of food because you don't, uh, you don't talk about things, you don't help people, you just keep moving. And so imagine witnessing that level of violence and being able to do nothing on it. When a person goes to jail, what happens to all their belongings, like their house and car and stuff? 
Um, so often a relative will have to take care of that uh, and deal with their bills or whatever. Sometimes if somebody's charged with a crime and they've been out uh, beforehand, they basically get their life in order. So the judge will say, you actually have to report to an institution at such and such time, so get your life in order. Sometimes if a person's arrested um, and put in jail right away, they'll be allowed to make phone calls to family to sort of solve those issues. But if you break a fairly serious crime uh, or the law and you victimize people in an incredibly bad way, they don't really, you know, the court system is not responsible for your car payments or making sure your house is locked, etc. But I know the police will often do that. They'll lock a person's house or secure the, the premises. Those are some great questions and thanks very much. I can't wait to have our future discussion.